Here it goes. We're all still here. Good. And we're also here. That was the, I'm going to hit continue. It, it, didn't, it didn't blow us up this time. I know that's <laughs> okay. Um, welcome. And as they say, we meet again. Welcome <laughs> to the June 28th meeting of the Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Um, Secretary, will you call the roll? Yes, Chair Lanier. I'm here. Uh, Director Maziars. Director Hall. Here. Director Mannheim. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Shaw. Here. Director Gudger. Here. Director Granados. Here. Director Warren. Waiting on David. Okay. Well, great. Thanks everybody for your patience and for joining us this afternoon. Um, next, we have oral communications. Any person may address the board during its oral communication period. All oral communications must be directed to an item not listed on today's consent or regular agenda and must be within the jurisdiction of the board. And since we have swapped meetings, I doubt there are any oral communications. Um, three, consideration of late agenda, late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent or regular agendas. Seeing none, I'll move on to the consent agenda. We have approved the board meetings, board minute meetings, board meeting minutes rather of May 24th, 2021. Approved board special meeting minutes of June 14th, 2021. I also have included in, I included in the agenda packet the amended board meeting uh, board minutes from um, April, whatever date that was, and approved the finance committee recommendation to accept the May 2021 financial reports. I'll entertain a motion or any questions. I move approval. We have a. a First, a motion to approve I'll Director second. Gudger and the second by Director O'Disco. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Moved and approved. Thank you. And now the regular agenda. I'm starting off with the executive director's report at the top because it will probably um, cover a number of things. Are, are you okay with that? Becca? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Let's move to that. I'm ready. Okay, so this is the report for June, or actually this is the report in June for May. And um, uh, as kind of a boring repetition, we are, our application is still being considered for the California Relief Grant and the EIDL still says we're funding. And um, I can't get anyone on the phone in either organization, so I'm just trusting them with that status. Um, in the co-working, our break-even number for the co-working center is 8,333. And um, in the month of April, we earned 76, um, about 70, $7,662, about 671 under our projection. So that was um, not as good as we hoped, but we are still 13.5% ahead of our budget and um, tours are picking up and we have new members joining, which is great. We've had new memberships in June and, and some, some, we've been very busy here. So it, it's a good thing. We're, we're gonna be fine as we move forward. Um, we did 22 government meetings in May and 15 webinars. That's a lot more webinars than usual. So that's like twice as many webinars as we usually do. Um, under facilities and equipment, this is this month is the month we renew our business insurance, and that's a whole bunch of different pieces. It's uh, DNO insurance and broadcasters, and ENO insurance and property, and um, uh, it. I just want to let you know we got insurance. Um, the Victor is working with an outside engineer. Uh, they've been focused on solving some captioning issues. This is May. They did solve those in June. Um, we're moving ahead with our plan to replace the telecast equipment. And Victor was working in May with consultants to put together a, mod a more modern system that would meet our needs in the future. And we'll talk to you about what we came up with later. Um, 
we've ordered we ordered the equipment for the youth grant um 20 ipads and 20 pad caster kits um, matilda assigned part numbers and entered them all into our inventory system and then um, she and um our member michael whose name his last name escapes me i'm sorry michael uh came on a saturday and labeled a bunch of them and then we discovered that they had sent us the wrong size ipad um frame so we had to take all those numbers off and send them back um we we got new ones in and uh they uh we got them labeled in time and delivered them to the watsonville recreation program and they got them in in june when they were supposed to mid-june so we were able to to uh, deliver on time um, we're opening our studio in July. We think we're ready to go. And, um, and Keith has been really uh, working hard on uh, safety measures and safety procedures so that everyone will be safe in the, in the studio. And um, those look good. And so hopefully in July, we'll start doing things in there. Um, we had in May, we were hiring for new government technicians and we did hire two new technicians. We now have a technical staff of two men and two women. As long as I've been here, it's never been balanced, never been equal. So that's very exciting. And uh, we made a transition in our health insurance from Blue Shield to Anthem Blue Cross this month. And that's complete. And um, we're training for uh, four of our staff members participated in the studio supervisor training, which was led by Keith and Matilda in May. And that was um, Ian and I and Kingston and Victor all got sort of a brush up on since the studio was going to be opening, how, uh, how to help people who are using it. And we have had a couple of rentals recently, people using the studio. So that's good. And um, today we did a tour of the studio for another uh, local producer. And um, that producer also, um, we're gonna do our first fiscal sponsorship with him. So we're very excited about that. We put that program together, gosh, last year, and we had someone who was interested in doing it, but the, their project never got support. But, um, and this one might not either, but, but we're going to do the, um, the fiscal sponsorship. And um, he's uh, produced a number of things and raised money for them. So I think it's going to work out great. And uh, under outreach, um, we did an elected spotlight and interviewed um, Manu Koenig. And that's my report for May. All right. Thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda, we have education report. Education Committee report. Um, although David's been unable to join us, he was going to give us a um, an oral report. Any other members of the Education Committee wish to um, give us an update, or is there anything to report? Oops, chat. So, um, due to summer conflicts, it was just David and I met, and we. Uh, we know that Becca has done a lot of work in terms of finding out what community colleges across the country have done. And so we want to meet with Becca or get the information from her about that. You didn't have anything in your report. I know you did a lot of work on that, Becca. I did, um, but I been I was unable to summarize it because I've been running the co-working center. <laughs> so um, it there are um there is a what i found that was really valuable i found a lot of bits and pieces all over the internet but i went to the fcc and of course they have everybody who has a community television station there but their their information is notoriously erroneous because it's so old usually but um there is a corporation a nonprofit corporation called the the um i think it's called the corporation for student broadcasters and um, they have a very robust work uh, ro uh, uh, website and they list all of the community stations in colleges, all the colleges. And there are hundreds of them. And they are, I mean, I actually made the list today. It's several pages long and I haven't been able to count them all yet. But um, there are lots and lots. Every, every noted university has one and lots of small ones and community television and, com and community colleges have them. So it's not unusual. And this group, the Corporation for, 
for student broadcasters also has a conference each year when they allow students and advisors and instructors to come. They invite anyone can come and um, they have uh, they provide curriculum and develop curriculum. And it seems like that's a great place to go to meet a bunch of people who are already doing it and in the flow of it. And maybe we can get some instructors from Cabrillo to go with us there or something like that. I think that'd be really interesting. And just finding out who's going would be interesting. I think we can get some, have some leads there. But it looks like it's a, there is um, a synergy about it. There are groups forming around that endeavor. And so I think it's, it's more than just the random college getting a community television station. It seems to be really um, common and they have their own groups. So we'll, um, I'll keep putting together information, but I was excited to see that they had a trade organization <laughs> to help them. And um, so that sounds good to me. Excellent, thank you. Um, I put down on the agenda volunteer advisory committee report. I don't know if there is same, Keith, are you also on that? <laughs> Well, I, I'm a volunteer advisory committee chair, oh, so I'm, okay. I'm supposed to be the one that reports every board meeting on that. So we sent out the studio supervisor and producers checklist to all the studio supervisors. And at this point, there are only three independent producers who are not also studio supervisors. Oh, so I'm, I'm sorry. Them, so I sent, them, I sent them the producer checklist. Um, I just checked, no one has sent in the form asking for a studio time yet, but I have heard from two producers that they are interested in producing our show in July. So we may get two, we may not. Okay. The other thing is we did a um, nonprofit spotlight this month with Sustainability Systems Research Foundation, and that's showing on the channels on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Um, welcome, David, to the meeting. Thanks <laughs> for joining us. Sorry if we missed you earlier. Oh, sorry for my confusion. No worries. Um, okay, moving on to item number 10, we are um, going to hear about the a bid, I guess, we got for some purchase of new captioning equipment. <clears throat> Becky, yeah. I'll throw that to you and Victor, I think. Yeah, well, I'll talk about the captioning. Victor's going to do the broadcasting. Okay. Way more tricky. Um, we have uh, we have had a caption issue that's been going on for, we've been having it for months and months and Victor has really worked hard on it. And I probably have mentioned it in meetings. We finally hired uh, Telview or not Telview, it's our, our other company that's not helpful. Um, Enco, which we, where we get our captioning machines, tried to, um, uh, they were basically they just have a hard time admitting that they could be wrong and they don't uh, they were very um, difficult to work with as far as of, of um, uh, service trying to to get this issue solved and Victor worked for them with them for months and months and they never did solve it so finally um, I hired a, uh, an outside company to help us and they did and within a couple of months, they had solved the problem. And it was um, a piece of equipment and, and Keith was kind of on the, the trail of it all along. Uh, we used ENCO for two years and it worked great. And then they changed their encoder. And after that, it didn't work. And they, uh, they could not help us get it to work. But this other engineering company found that it was just a different encoder that we needed. We put in this outboard encoder or I say we, I mean Victor, <laughs> put in this piece of equipment, and um, and it worked great. In an hour and a half, they had captions streaming and on on uh, on the channel. So um, he's going to help us upgrade our system. Our, our it's time for us to to redo our lease on the captioner machines, and we will not be doing it through Enco. Although we will get Enco machines because their speech to text is the best. So now that we know what the problem is, um, we're gonna buy them through the company that solved the issue and let them be the, uh, they'll be our conduit to support if we need it. 
So we won't have to argue with the company. And um, we're buying two encoders and two captioners. And the great thing about these captioners is we now lease every year, we lease uh, the Enco machine and it costs us about 15 to $17,000 a year. And we can now buy these machines outright and use them for 10 years. And it'll be $45,000 to buy them, but they'll be good for 10 years. So it's much less than we would pay if we continued to uh, lease them. And also we can run them continuously. Right now we can only use 33 hours a month, but with mm -hmm. the new machines, it's unlimited captioning. So we could, we might do all kinds of things with that. And these newer machines will allow us to caption other things that we want to caption. So we could caption our own shows if we wanted. We could caption, we could do a caption service for other producers in town that want to have caption programming. So we can caption things offline is the point. So it's a potential um, extra revenue stream. And um, Victor can probably answer questions about that. Is there anything else that's advantageous about the switch, Victor, that I didn't cover? Uh, I think that covers it about the switch. Uh, the biggest thing was just getting the actual signals through um, and having an encoder that works properly. The anchor machines generate the text and they do a great job at that. Um, but the trouble we had was actually laying that into our signal. Um, and so that's that's all wrapped up now, thankfully. Um, great. Um, so Tom. Yeah, um, a question about the the new machines and the software that supports it. Do we know that that you know over the ten years that it'll continue to be supported and that I mean it's you know that part of the advantages of doing a lease is that they're on the hook to keep supporting it and even though they obviously weren't doing a very good job. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were they were doing a poor job. Um, there is support built into the quote. So um, and there. Uh, I don't, I believe that updates are, um, since it's online, the updates should just happen automatically. But, and we assume we, we have some understanding or um, reassurance that they will, I assume the software is an ENCO software, right? It is. And that they'll, con they'll continue to support this device over the next 10 years? Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, 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 soft, the captioner is ENCO. And the, um, the encoder is different. It's not encode. That's the difference. Keep In the actual bid that you gave us, there's a line item of $6,000 for one year of support. And it says it can be continued after that. So I'm assuming that's hardware and software. It says server and software includes software upgrades, optional after year one. It doesn't sound like something we'd want to be optional. Well, the what he told me was he said that get the get it for a year. And he said, you'll probably you won't need it. So he said, we can always make a decision and make a deal to buy it again later. We don't have to buy it again. So just get it to begin with. And you may or may not want to re up that contract. It's sort of like we have that with Telview too. And um, sometimes we don't do it until we need it. So some years we never pay for the contract and other years we buy it and have it. And we can do that. I mean, if it, if, if it, if we need it, we can just then buy that support. Yes. Well, like I mentioned, um, I mean, captioning is based is AI based and it probably is improving all the time. Let's hope. So there may be a compelling reason to get that contract every year. Well, we can. I mean, there's certainly no problem doing that. We could certainly afford that. And they do. The one thing that makes ENCO a good choice is that they've been using this same speech to text for years now, and they have found all the mistakes. They, they've been working on it and developed a lot of filters to filter out things, and every year it's better. So, and we always, it's always updated on our machines now, and we can easily afford to pay for the, the service contract that would include that if we want to. Um, it's just we have the option not to if we don't want to. Right. Um, the first line on this invoice, it's cable and co buyout. Because mm -hmm, we aren't going to lease it, we're going to buy it. 
So it, that's not us buying out of a contract. That's actually oh, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, no. yeah. That's gotcha. the, it's a buyout. So we own it for we own it, and it's supposed to be. It's guaranteed for ten years. So I mean, it's guaranteed to work. And am I seeing correctly? I mean, we I've got four pages of pieces of equipment listed, totaling close to a hundred thousand. Well, that, you've got two things. You've got the that's what I was trying to find out. And the broadcast. Yeah. Okay. They're both about 45, 47,000. And that's okay. Why. Victor's here to talk about the second one. Right. I just was trying to understand the difference between all the sheets we have here. Let me, I'm going to look at those just to be sure that's correct. And Larry, and one. I'm sorry, one last question I had on, on the ca um, the captioning. Mm -hmm. I noticed on-site installation and training is done by Justin Calgo. Is he no longer with Create TV or is he, are they, is municipal captioning hiring him on the side to do this? Yeah, he's a contractor for them and he is who's helped solve the problem we have now. Okay. It's the it's a combination of the guy who owns a company, Daniel Municipal Captioning. He figured it out, but um, Jason has been his hands, and so he comes down and actually helped Victor Just, Justin, plug in, uh -huh. plug Justin put it in, install it for the first time. Now Victor okay. can probably do it by himself, but it was a weird uh, installation because it had to be installed a certain way. <laughs> Victor could tell you more about why it was different, but it was helpful to have somebody else. So do we need a motion for the first contract and then a motion for the second contract? I would do them separate. For the um, for the the captioning equipment and then a second one for the broadcasting or two within the captioning, one for hardware, one for software. Is that what you're saying? I was saying the first one is the first page, which is the entire captioning system, hardware and software. Okay. And then another motion for the tightrope equipment, which is called cable cast. In the okay. Room. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. So I have one question, Becca. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure we're just, just piggybacks on what Tom was asking about. This isn't, we're not, we're getting new hardware, right? We're not just buying what we currently have. No, no. Okay, well, that's, I, I, the whole buyout thing is a weird. Yeah. Term. Yeah, the way it's, right. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. I guess he meant. No, that's their, that's their, that's their language. Your yeah. thing is that I, you know, based on my background, I would really highly not think of this as a 10 year product. Computer products beyond five years are, yeah. are at, at best out of date, <laughs> at worst, not functioning. The other thing is, is that most support companies, if you cancel a year, will make you pay full up before you uh, get oh. support. That's ge that's generally the practice. They don't let you do it unless they have a per incident type basis, which may be, may be useful. Just so I, I just for budgeting moving forward, it's, I mean, most yeah. companies don't let you skip a year then get it the next year. You have to pay up for that year you missed. Well, what uh, we could do is agree. I could put in the, we don't currently have a line in the budget like that, but we could be, a, we could put a support line in and just include all these things in there so we can see it and be aware of it as we move along. Um, I want to say here though, that the $45,000 is for one machine, one, one captioner. We will be buying another one. Uh, we have one that goes away in September. So to buy two would be $90,000 and the broadcast equipment is additional, but they last way longer. It'll save us money in the long run than doing the lease every year. So when are, that's a second machine that you're gonna be bringing back at a later time? Yeah. Right now we're just doing one. Joe. Uh, Tom, just one thing. Becca went over this at our uh, finance committee meeting. So uh, it's good we're getting more information, but just FYI. Thank you. Sorry I missed that. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry. I was, <laughs> it was great to be away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd like to move approval of the INCO contract. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. 
um, just for clar clarification, the ENCO contract or the MC contract for ENCO equipment and support? The MC contract for ENCO equipment and support. Okay. Second, if somebody, I don't know if somebody already did. No, I've got um, a motion by Keith and a second by Tom for the MC uh, captioning equipment and support. Let's have a roll call, I think, on this. Absolutely. Um, Director Gudger. Yes. Director Granados. Nope, not on. He's muted. Muted. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Director I'm Warren. To unmute her. There she is. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Shaw. Yes. Director Mannheim. Yes. Director Laurent, yes. Chair Lanye. Yes. Okay. All right. Moved. And Keith. I just want to point out, I checked our balance. This all comes out of our capital account. Yeah. And we have at the, um, according to the financial data in the packet, we have $1.1 million in our capital account in the bank. And since this is our mission to provide programming for the county and now to do captioning. I, I think it is appropriate that we spend our capital budget this way. I just yeah. wanted to say that. Thank you. That's a good, very good point for the record. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so we now move on to the, um, let's see, the, enco the next <laughs> section of this um, captioning yeah, um, it's a bid it, basically. How do you describe it? Yeah, it's a bid from the same company, but it's not right. for captioning equipment. It's for it's to replace our broadcast system pretty much wholesale. It's we're going to probably eliminate the old one and bring in a new one. And Victor can talk about that. I want to at the finance committee, um, we were uh, some it came up that we share, we thought we shared a we had at one time shared a cloud. Uh, account with CMAP so that uh, the two of us split the cost of storage for our programming. And that went away a couple years ago. And I, I thought that, but I couldn't remember exactly what happened. I went back and found my emails and I have two bills, one from one for us and one for them for the same exact money and the same exact thing. So we no longer share it with them. So they are already paying for their own storage. We were thinking that if we changed, maybe they wouldn't be able to afford their to store their programming and we wanted to work something out with them and but we don't need to they're already paying it i thought i remembered paying the two bills and i had sent them both to mel saying i thought are they double charging us or did they just split this in half so um that happened our year before last so cmap is in good shape they'll be fine if we make this change and they may make the same change we do okay. so victor do you want to talk about this gear sure um it's a pretty major overhaul of our whole system, um, I believe, which is about eight years old now. Uh, it came on board about the time I started doing this for you guys. Um, uh, we'd be replacing the main broadcast unit, which uh, generates, you know, basically gathers all of our different video from various sources and generates a video stream, which we then send to the cable company or, or online streams or wherever that may be. Um, there are a few advantages, uh, big ones. Um, one is that this one is uh, this new system is going to be much more IP capable and the fact that you will be able to uh, stream uh, probably from our mobile TriCaster system and from remote locations uh, directly into the channels uh, before we've needed fiber optic infrastructure to do that. So we have very few locations outside of the studio that that was possible. Um, so that's a, a big exciting thing for me. Um, uh, other side, uh, uh, you'll see in there, there's a big switch uh, and uh, patch uh, component that's going to be put in. Um, uh, it, my tray has seen it, but um, our, our system right now, it's a lot of, you know, very cheap SDI uh, splitters and things like that, that, that turn the, the actual infrastructure, you know, working on it is very difficult is, is the way I would put it. And that it's, uh, you know, a bit of a spaghetti mess in there sometimes. Um, and doing this is going to really clean that up, also give us remote connection. Uh, to move our video streams into to, uh, different spots um, instead of actually having to physically go down to the county building, uh, which we need an escort for and everything to, uh, 
to do those projects. Um, we'll be able to do it remotely uh, and way quicker and easier. Uh, the other huge thing that I'm really excited about, um, Cablecast has a, 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 it's, it's a hardware and software called a carousel. Um, we actually used to have one um, before we made the switch to Telview. And it, um, uh, you see on channel 25, typically we have our community calendar when we're not playing reruns of our, uh, or, or live programs of our, our government programming. And uh, that is going to be far more robust and uh, a lot easier to maintain. I think um, right now we uh, Keith is gracious enough to you know collect all of our uh, PSAs and things and and create a video on a regular basis that we air and loop. Um, what this does is you can actually you know upload slides to and it generates the video stream for you. Uh, so we can put in slides. Wow. We can even. Uh, aggregate weather data, traffic data, things like that, and it presents it in a, a nice way. Um, so that's going to really make things easier and look a lot nicer. Um, and the other part of that too is that some of that uh, is, is used for uh, uh, channel identification and uh, you know, kind of like what's up next kind of things like that. We can use functions like that inside of it to improve the look of the other channels as well, since community calendar is mostly isolated on 25, um, but that's going to really improve things, I think. Um, those are the main points of it, though, but if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Joe. Uh, in our meeting, Becca mentioned, an, is it this system that allow a little streaming across the bottom of the screen, like the weather or something else? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, it should be able to do that. And we'll probably be putting something like that, at least in our, our community calendar. So okay. all sorts of little kind of, you know, it can take information from the internet and, and generate images for you instead of us having to go, okay, what's the weather today and actually make a slide. It just does it all for you. Yeah. Wow. And that's great. Yeah. What's, um, what's the anticipated delivery if we approve this? What are we talking about? We're trying to do the work in July if we can. So that's why we're kind of rushing. Pushing to get it done, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we, we'd like to, some of the gear the our vendor has on hand, so we could start working on some of it right away. And um, it will probably take a month, I would think. So, and we don't want to do it when we're in the middle of stuff. We don't want to have, right. we don't, we've got, this is our only gap really. Yeah. <laughs> And is there a is there going to be downtime at all when this happens? I imagine, Victor. Yeah, I don't have a uh, exactly firm idea of that at this point, but um, I, I believe we should be able to minimize that to you know a day or two at the very most. Um, okay. It shouldn't be a situation where we're offline for weeks or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and well, there may be an opportunity where we you know just switch over, and, and there is no downtime. Um, but that's something I need to work out with them. I don't expect there to be much. Okay. Um, uh, Keith. Well, my first question had been the downtime, but Victor just answered that. The next question is, I know this will allow us to have an HD signal. Um, right. What will that mean? Will, will Comcast accept an HD signal? What will happen with that? Well, we will be sending Comcast an HD signal, but they will not be displaying it to their customers as HD. Um, it simplifies things a lot on our end uh, right now, uh, and this is probably part of why we were having so many issues with our captioning hardware, uh, was that, you know, we actually, uh, part of our system is in HD and then it gets downgraded before it gets sent out to Comcast. Um, and right now that's going to, with the new system, our entire signal chain all the way through is going to be in HD. And then once it hits Comcast, they, they do their own, you know, stuff to it. For their own stuff, you know, their own broadcast. Becca, um, that's part of SB twenty eight is making the cable cast companies put the community television stations on HD. Yeah. So hopefully, if that get, goes through Great. and gets passed, I know I don't know how long they'll dawdle in giving us that, but um, it it's out there. So this will be good for us eventually. Okay. Does the, the, sorry. Do no, you, Tom, please. Um, does does the bill um, also require them to maintain um, our existing channel, or are they going to relegate us to the 700s and 800s and 1000s? Where's 
C-SPAN is up at 1,000 now. It's very hard to find on Comcast. I know. Yeah, I don't. I did not see that in the bill, and I'm not sure the writers of the bill maybe thought about the possibilities of that. I know when we worked at KQED, we had to really argue to get the numbers we wanted because they, when we went from digital, from analog to digital, it was a fight to the finish. And right. they had lots of lawyers. So um, I don't know what will happen to us. They have, they have, they've, um, have tried in many places, and they have not tried, but they, yeah. they've moved up into a tier where you have to then go down, um, it's almost yeah. impossible to find the channels. So be in the 600s or something. Well, we, probably the county can help us with that. I don't know if that's something that we, we should probably talk to Kevin and see if that might happen. He probably okay. is a better a good, judge good of that. Point for us to put up in the finance committee and I can talk to the city uh, uh, lobbyist about that because if they start putting the council meetings up into the thousands, they're effectively uh, they're squashing. burying them. Yeah, yeah, they're burying them. Yeah, yeah. that's a really yeah, good I point. Don't... Yeah, and they may not be able to. I don't know what the rules are. I know it happened to PBS, so I imagine it could happen to us. Um, I, another yeah. question. I I noticed there was a reference to equipment going in the head end, and. Um, have we had any communications with Comcast to make sure they're not going to give us grief or want to charge us to inst install new equipment in their head end? I, I believe that would be our head end. Um, and oh, so this the, is our the, head end? Yeah, that would, yeah, I don't believe there's any equipment in there that would Comcast would need to uh, mess with at all. We oh, good. basically just give them an SDI signal out of our system and, and they've Great. got it and they're good. So. And I'm assuming um, there's no problem with the county being able to accommodate whatever equipment we put there. Do we know? Um, I'll need to my be speaking work. with my tray. I think the, the one hiccup could be if we wanted to try and install this simultaneously. So we could do what I talked about earlier, where we just switch over to it. Um, there's an actual space you know, issue there. And I need to see how much of that um, you know, we can kind of side load. Um, but there's plenty of space. In fact, the, the system that we're looking at is going to be smaller uh, uh, than, right. than what's in there now. Uh, we're going to be able to get a lot or rid of a lot of the rack mounted units that are there. Um, one other thing I, I realized I didn't mention um, is that uh, we have a whole elemental system that, that basically sends out our internet streams. Um, this system also will be replacing that. Uh, one of its functions is it can send out internet streams just like that box does. So great. No. Uh, the elemental it replaces a few things. Yeah. Keith. So the elemental though also did a recording, right? It recorded the entire stream to use to prove that you actually transmitted something. Is that not the case? I don't believe so. It may have some sort of logs, but there's definitely no video recording on that system. It doesn't have the, the space to do that, but it may have some sort of uh, log system that was used for that. Um, not something I've ever had to pull. So. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is Victor, is this enough space for the five years, you think? I think so. Yeah. Our our current system, you know, it's it's storing standard definition video for the most part. And we run five terabytes at about capacity constantly, where I'm 95 to 97 percent full at all times. Um and so that's four times the space moving to HD, you know, I still want to encourage our producers to upload in 720 uh, since our signal is being, you know, crushed down to below that anyways for cable. But um, I think it should be plenty of space. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry, maybe I misread it. So it's this, you get, it's 10 store, 10 terabytes, and then there's an additional 10 terabytes. Is that right? Uh, I believe when I read it earlier, yeah, it was a, a total of 20. Uh, and let me... And so it's only fourteen hundred dollars for another ten terabytes. Yes. Add another ten terabytes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, that might not be a bad option. I'll, yeah. I'll need to speak with them, and and it might be a good idea to try and get in touch with an organization that is storing HD at this point. I, just, just so you, I mean, that's we we store time. HD videos for some of our 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 stuff, and it's it, it's significantly more right. Nasty. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> so, all right. Um, any other questions? I'd entertain a motion. 
I'd move approval of the MC purchase of the MC quote equipment on pages one, two, and three of quote 1368, which is all of the broadcast equipment we've just been discussing. All right, we have a motion on the floor. I'll second, but I also have a question. Do we want to have it for more in case they want to add the extra 10 terabytes or something else? Oh. Pad, pad it a little bit. I mean, what would that be? That could be shipping also. Well, actually, they say shipping to government customers, free shipping. The um, last stage oh. of the quote. Oh. Do you want to amend the motion or, or um, to add another 2,000? What was the, Victor, what was the, the sum for the terabyte? Or per yeah, what I'm seeing is I believe it comes standard with 10, and then there's the upgrade for another 10 to bring it to 20, which costs us 1,400 by this line here. Um, so if we counted for another 1,400, I think that would cover things as long as the unit's physically able to accept that many hard drives. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'll speak with them. Um, as maker of the motion, I'm happy to include the additional 1400 plus tax for an additional 10 terabyte storage unit. All right. Acceptable to the second? Yes. Okay. Um, let's, we have a motion on the floor to approve the contract for broadcast equipment plus an additional 1400 for additional storage, 10 st terabytes of storage. Let's have a roll call on this one too. Director Mannheim. Yes. Director Shaw. Yes. Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director Warren. Yes. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Laurent. Yes. Chair Lanier. Yes. Uh, Director Granadas. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Director Granados. I'm sorry, I don't have for some reason I don't have it showing video. Sorry. No, no worries. That's okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank sorry. you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's great. That's very um, looking forward to getting this stuff in place, and um, it, it sounds good. And it, it's also, I think, very good that we have this. It's kind of a middle person, you know. Um, contractor here but i think that's good um it served us well with the captioning issue and if they're you know we're their customer and so they watch out for us rather than uh, and then deal with enco so that's actually a good thing i think they might have a little more cool yeah um okay um we have um number 12 is um discussion to refer to the governance committee review of policies and procedures relating to hateful speech. This um, references a discussion we had a couple of months ago um, and um, we didn't really come to a decision. We were gonna postpone the discussion and then we, we postponed it again. Becca, do you want a, a quick refresher and then see what people, the people think? Yeah, well, we had, we had talked about the potential for people to upload to our channel um, hateful content or misinformation. And um, a lot of community television stations have, have um, experienced that. We have not, but you know, we just wanted, I just wanted to make you guys aware that that could happen. And what, what might be a good, a good way to go is to just have a, maybe the governance committee review our current policy. We do have a policy about this and we could take a look at it and see if it stands up in the face of what, uh, what, what we're experiencing now in television and in communication and on social media with hate speech and, um, and a lot of misinformation and conspiracy theories. Yes, Joe? Oh, keep going. I just wanted to get in line after you're done. Oh, okay. <laughs> So um, we have not experienced yet, but it seems like a good idea to review what we have and see if we need to amend it for the current times or if it stands strong as it is. And then um, we could, uh, the governance committee could bring that back to the board and we could all Great. take a Great. look at Great, thank it. you. Uh, Joe? Um, my only thought is I think it's a good idea to refer it to the committee. But I thought it'd be good for the board to discuss a little bit what are existing. And so 
the committee can hear the thoughts of everybody. Uh, it was just, I thought of a good first step and a pretty complicated uh, issue for the board to do a little more discussing of it. I think it's too late to do it tonight, but it would be good for them to review the policy. And then uh, that gives a little guidance to the governance committees where people's thoughts are on it, or maybe there are none and they'll just have to do the work, but it's such a complicated subject. I, I'm not in a rush to do it, but I think it's definitely important we do it. And I thought it'd be good for the board to have at least one 15, 20 minute discussion of it. And then it goes to the committee. We could, have that, we could have that as an informational item, I, I suppose, on, a, on an upcoming um, meeting. What I, what I would propose is um, that we have, that we do refer to the governance committee to review where we're at now. You know, what are our policies and, and maybe um, bat around some of the, the potential holes in those and then then we can bring that to the board and the board can then further that discussion. Um, I don't know that we need, I guess we do need a motion for this, but that would be my suggestion. I don't mind doing it. I just thought I'd throw out one other option. I'll, I'll make the motion that we refer this issue to the governance committee. For review, okay. I'll second uh, that motion. Uh, Christina, thank you for a second. We have a motion by uh, Director Hall and a second by Director Granados to refer this to the Governance Committee for review um, and then a, a report back to the larger board for discussion if we need to take further action. Um, let's have a roll on this to Secretary Laurent. Absolutely. Um, Director Gudger. Yes. Director Warren. Yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director O'Driscoll? Yes. Director Shaw? Yes. Director Manheim? Yes. Director Granados? Yes. Director Laurent? Yes. Director, I mean, Chair Lanyan? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, any board member or staff requests, Victor, <laughs> for specific items or Rebecca to appear on the next meeting agenda? No. Seeing none, um, announcements. And seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to for adjournment. So moved. Tom? Moved by Director Mannheim. Second. Director Gudger, second. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Yay. Aye. aye. All right. Aye. Thank you. Nice moved to see so everybody. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate right. it. Thank bye. You. See you next bye. month. Bye-bye.